In this video, we'll talk about Luciferase Reporter Assay. Luciferase Reporter Assay is a bioluminescence-based assay in molecular biology which utilizes luciferase enzyme and its substrate luciferine to study gene expression regulation. It has wide variety of applications like gene expression analysis, promoter strength analysis, microRNA regulation analysis, and many more. It has several advantages like it is highly sensitive and it is reproducible. In this video, we'll talk about what is luciferase reporter assay, what is the advantage of luciferase reporter assay, applications, and how the data is analyzed and how we can account for the variabilities and what things we should keep in mind while analyzing the data. So stay tuned till the end of this video and use a headphone for better quality. So let's talk about what is luciferase. Luciferase is an enzyme which gives rise to bioluminescence and it is pretty common in fireflies. So firefly luciferase enzyme actually converts substrates like luciferin into oxyluciferin. Luciferase enzyme actually oxidizes luciferin and in this process light is generated and this is the bioluminescence phenomena. This phenomena is utilized in this particular assay as a readout. So let's see how it works. So first, we need to check whether a particular promoter is active or not. In order to do that, we have to clone a promoter upstream to a luciferase reporter sequence. In this case, you can see the luciferase reporter sequence in green and promoter sequence in red. So if this particular promoter is active, then mRNA for luciferase would be produced and eventually it would be translated into luciferase enzyme. Now when we put substrate, this luciferase enzyme will show bioluminescence. So these expression vectors has to be transfected into a cell. We have to allow them for some time such that the expression of these luciferase enzyme can happen. And then the cells are homogenized and then substrate is added. So once substrate is added, then the, lucif the luciferase would convert luciferin into oxyluciferin and bioluminescence activity should be visualized using a detector. So this is the principle which is used in a luciferase reporter assay. Now let's talk about the applications of luciferase reporter assay. There are a wide variety of applications like gene expression analysis, promoter structure analysis and strength analysis, SNP analysis. It is also used in the field of antiviral research and therapeutics. It is also used for drug discovery and analyzing the effect of a drug on transcription. So let's talk about some of these examples with uh, in in much elaborated fashion. So first let's say we want to understand whether a particular gene is expressed in a tissue specific manner or not. So we cloned our gene of or, or our promoter of interest upstream to a luciferase reporter gene and then we would transfect it into different cell types and we would check the bioluminescence activity. Here the bioluminescence activity works like a readout which tells us whether the gene is expressed in that particular cell type or not. In this case, bioluminescence was observed from the epithelial and fibroblast cell, not from the neuronal cell. That means this particular gene of interest is epithelial or neuron or fibroblast specific and it is not expressed in the neuron. Let's take another example. We might ask whether a promoter is strong or weak. So this is a promoter. So under the promoter, there is gene body and in the promoter, RNA polymerase is recruited. So when the gene is getting transcribed, we would see mRNA is produced. So this particular promoter is cloned upstream to a reporter sequence and the reporter activity would tell us about the strength of this promoter. So bioluminescence is a readout for strength of the promoter. So let's take the example. Here we have promoter A and here we have promoter B. In underneath both these promoter, we have the luciferase reporter gene. Now we would transfect it into same cells, same number of cells as well, and then measure the luciferase activity by putting substrates. In this very example, we can see promoter A is much stronger than promoter B. That's why bioluminescence activity is much, much stronger in promoter A compared to promoter B. 
So now we understand how we can use luciferase reporter assay to ask questions in molecular biology. We can also understand whether a particular protein of interest is repressing the transcription or activating the transcription. Here, this particular protein is possibly activating the transcription. So we have to kind of co-transfect the cells with the expression vector containing the protein and also a re luciferase reporter construct. If we see a lot of luciferase reporter activity, that means this particular protein is a transcriptional activator. In contrast, if the after transcription after transfection, if we see negligible luciferase activity, that means that particular protein is a repressor of transcription. These kind of questions can also be asked using a luciferase reporter assay. Now, while performing a luciferase assay, we need to understand few precautions. So, first of all, there could be many variability that can uh, affect our results. For example, if we take less amount of cells or there could be variability in terms of transfection efficiency. Also, there could be variability during cell handling. Question is how one can account for all these variabilities and overcome these variabilities in their assay. Question is, I mean, the answer is we can use a internal control. An internal control is kind of a luciferase which is driven by a constitutive promoter. And many luciferase can be used. For example, Renilla luciferase, Firefly luciferase, and each of these luciferase has their own purposes. Now, a normalized ratio is obtained for each well by calculating the experimental reporter activity divided by the control reporter activity. So here experimental reporter means where luciferase is driven by an experimental promoter divided by control reporter means the luciferase is driven by a constitutive active promoter. Now this particular normalized ratio can account for all the variabilities in transfection efficiency, cell number or let's say variability in detection. Now let's say we have a experiment. In this experiment we have a sample A where we have uh, we want to understand the expression of a particular gene and in sample B we have added a drug and we want to understand what happens to the same gene expression after adding this drug. So question is does drug X change, change the transcription from promoter A or not? Here we are using a dual luciferase reporter setup that means we have an experimental luciferase vector Another is the control luciferase vector. Both has to be transfected at the same time. Then obviously from the wells we have to measure the bioluminescence activity and then we have to represent the data in terms of fold change. And the fold change is actually calculated by the normalized ratio that we have mentioned earlier for sample B which is a treatment situation divided by the normalized ratio for sample A. That means the control situation and the data can be analyzed and represented like fold change. So from this data we can understand that transcription activity from promoter A has increased after the exposure of drug X. So these kind of conclusions can be drawn using these reporter assays. So let's talk about the overall advantages. It is extremely sensitive, reproducible, compatible with internal control and reporters. So with these kind of internal controls, the variability is taken care of. So it is highly, highly sensitive and reproducible. And lastly, this doesn't use any radioactive substances. So it is hazard free. In summary, we can say we have learned what is reporter assay, how uh, reporter assay is advantageous, what are the applications of this assay and what are the variables that can affect our assay result and how to overcome that. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and also support me on Patreon or by clicking on the super like, you can support my channel. Thank you.